cohesion. And furthermore, uh, given the expectations that others will also conform. So the expectation there is to say that um, because this is what is expected of us, therefore we must, as a group, even although we think outside of what is expected of us, we must continue um, a, our activities as what is expected. So I'm giving the example of sexuality because this is something that is being discussed a lot right now. Eh? Um, most people will not accept that they are, for example, bisexual or, or, or so on. Eh? Like recently, you heard that Billie Eilish came out and said she's lesbian. Eh? Yeah. So why has it taken her that long? When, when you are looking at the type of person that she is, for me, it was pretty obvious eh? to tell Buddha, Montuyu, the way that she acts, the way that she is, she de definitely looks like a person who can like girls as opposed to boys, right? But then it has taken her, imagine a person who lives in the US, eh? in a country such as that, it has taken her that long to come out and say something like this because of the social work, cohesion. So it's, it's something like, what right? What are my friends going to say? And for her, it would be like, what are my fans going to say? Something like that. And <clears throat> so individuals are discouraged from violating norms by the threat of social disapproval or punishment and feelings of guilt and shame uh, that result from the internalization of norms. So harmful norms and stereotypes are deeply embedded uh, in laws, politics, corporate culture, popular culture, right? Which is the example that I gave, the religion, the family life, and so on. So um, an individual is most likely to conform to the expectations of, of, of all this, the law, the politics, the corporate culture, the popular culture, and so on. So people conform because they believe most other people conform as well, and that others think they should conform too. So the social rewards for doing so and the social sanctions for failing to do so are very real. So um, as an individual, ask yourself, what are the pros and cons of me, for example, uh, coming out to my parents and say I'm gay, right? It's going to create a freedom for me, at least people know it. What are the consequences? The way, for example, people are going to treat you eh, moving forward. How are people going to treat you if they realize that you're gay? What is uh, the consequences in your family when they say, hey, atudu, mawude, mawude, right? So it is again the shame and also the, the guilt that people feel uh, when, for example, they express how they really feel or what it is that they really are. And a variety of external and internal factors are thought to maintain culture and norm and social norms that affect women's rights. And these include the harmful widowhood practice, um, the female genital, gen, 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 genital mutilation, the lack of entitlement to husband's property. This one, this lack of entitlement to husband's property. Is men's Hmm? 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 Oh, okay. like good in terms of like investment. Eh? Ah, bank account don't run down. Do I he's married? Eh? Osa, osa. Muna, muna. Guma I will not If a person is married, muna go a man get a new bank account. Muna go move this in the next month. So, eh? so yeah. So there's lack of enjoyment of husbands property. We have this uh, this American standard of uh, a prenup. Eh? If a man is very successful, it means she has to know what she just says many the man has is not what? It's not has it. But then when you're looking at this lack of entitlement of husbands poverty, what in a in a setting such as the way that the society is working right now? It's Ali Sali Panchit. See For example, Ali Sali Panchit. Banji as the like for example a cup. Manji, like either you as a man or a woman, Mugani ga wanji ubaga investment separately. Why do you think women don't invest? Audari azama muna wage. But then, so, nkani ya audari la is more of a, a social thing, eh? Kuti ima kwa nodi munu hana uzidone ya kuti, for example, walibu anaye na unoda manodi, futu kwa unu ule minama zodi ini, what kind of angkari jina you just said, they also don't invest it. So it's just a complex where people, because of the situation that they're in, they sort of feel entitled to say what is in design, right? So you, for example, as a person, you know, I've school, 
uindizi ntu zangu ndio inaanga ngobwera zangu fikira unyerera basi eh how would that be, how would that be you feel hmm unaanga ngobwera zangu fikira unyerera for example ntama ya press statement yona kuti ineyo rusinga ubase ndama zinizo ineyo sister wanga umaya anga ubambanga sina abase ku ndama zinizo why do you think people say something like that ndugumira do you think ndugumira kumana kabena pena kumakha kuti munthu ja anavutikira zinthu zake ende munthu inaka mm -hmm. so it's it's either it's it's either or right yes so um it's just it just creates in society where um people sometimes feel like they're entitled to certain things but then there's that entitlement and also there's also an obligation as a human being eh, to do certain things and the lack of access to resources um the dis disentitlement of female child in families is there a disentitlement do you know what disentitlement of female child in families means it's like in a family setting where inheritance eh does that happen here where in what culture no i am asking because i don't know right yes what what cultures is that present in Most of the concept is the Kazakh mm -hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Explain, explain more. What? As some passes into Shwan Rodiani, Umena Ovi Mm-hmm. And what's the new Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got you. Oh, oh, So if you are saying kuna kuti akapeza kale katundu kumena kuti obanja apo do you think that interacts with lack of entitlement in husband's property how do you think that is? the assumption is to say kuna kuti akakwati wakapeza zinthe kumana she is not entitled to her husband's property so now you would be able to identify where women are disadvantaged eh? because in one side they have the assumption now kuti tisampase funa kuti obanja akapasibe Ubanja kuja they are not entitled if not that you so I would give an example of myself, for example, eh? Mbalewanga kaudu muna and this is not it, mbalewanga nyama, right? Neba si akakwatiankazu waga bezo not in here that's just a bit why you have a mini if you if you as baggage of the gana in tie of say. Right? So that's what creates the lack of entitlement. Eh? So now the girl has not given entitlement from the family. Um, and has also not been given entitlement from the husband. Not even, let's say that Ubancha would jabu be around. So that's what creates um, these inequalities for women and lack of education for girls. So you are looking at these factors that are going to affect. It's either these factors can interact either uh, two of them or three of them at the same time, and that is going to affect generally um, the women, the woman's ability to uh, improve their her socioeconomic status. Any questions? No questions? Okay. So in summary, we look at how culture and norms uh, have barriers to women's development and particularly in developing countries. We also see that this, uh, this is because of the cultural hegemony already exists in societies that enforce certain norms that affect women. So in summary, we see that culture is a string force in discussing women's rights and empowerments in traditional societies because um, generally women in general have no choice but to conform to their expected traditional roles uh, because of these expectations and this means that cultural issues should be foremost in addressing women's setbacks in developing countries so this is this is particularly uh foremost because um 
in in our society setting you find that when i my issues for example in culture where girls were being married off it so they had to challenge this particular culture to ensure that um issues of gender So finally, we're going to look at Unit 4, Understanding the Issues of Gender-Based Violence um, in Regards to the Inequalities. So the gender differentiation is very common in a patriarchal setup where one group of people feel superior while the other is deemed inferior. So automatically, weak and subordinate and therefore can inflict pain and harm outrightly. So gender differentiation is often pointed out as a negative structure that enforces such treatment towards women. So this unit further tries to explain and explore uh, these uh, violence against women that is faced. So the learning outcome is that you should be able to uh, define gender-based violence, identify the types of gender-based violence and factors that cause uh, gender-based violence. So violence against women is a technical term used to collectively refer to violent acts that are primarily or ex exclusively committed against women. So similarly to a hate crime, we know what a hate crime is. So a hate crime would be something that uh, you do specifically because, uh, for example, you do something specifically because you hate a certain aspect uh, of a particular community. For example, um, xenophobia, right? It's considered a hate crime because they hate and uh, Or for example, um, maybe shooting of black people would be considered a hate crime. Um, so this type of violence targets a specific group with victims' gender as a primary motive. So the United uh, Nations General Assembly defines violence against women as any acts of gender-based violence that results in or likely to result in physical, sexual, mental harm or suffering to women. So when you're looking at gender-based violence, it's just um, sometimes you might think of it as most of the times it's any act that um, is going to cause both physical, sexual, mental harm and suffering. So it could be belittling someone, must want to make sure, like, you know, gaslighting, right? Um, it, it is one of those elements that uh, promote gender-based violence. And so, so including threats of such acts, cohesion, habitation, deprivation of liberty, whether occurring in public or in private life. So in 1993, uh, the declaration of the elimination of violence against women noted that violence could be perpetrated by assaultants of either genders. So that is not to state that only women are experiencing the gender-based violence, but both genders, right? So primary key there when you're looking at gender-based violence right, is amena in the upper hand, financially and so on in the internet. Uh, women are more likely to be victimized by someone that they are intimate with commonly called the intimate partner violence. So you're looking at being violated uh, by the person that you're dating or you're married to. And the impact of gender-based violence in a sphere of, um, in a sphere of total violence against women can be understood through the example that 70 or seven, 40 or 70 percent murders of women committed by the husbands or boyfriends. So you're looking at that percentage, eh? Have you heard of this before? Primarily in the, in the US and developed countries, eh? where you find that many of the murders that are committed, um, that murders of women have been committed by their husbands and their boyfriends, as opposed to kwa mutuina. Before as for example, yourself, eh? you can't just go and maybe commit something to an individual that means right? that most of the times it's because of a, a, a love relationship. Uh, so studies have shown that violence is not always perpetrated as a form of physical violence, but also the psychological 
and verbal. So the instances of intimate viol uh, partner violence tend to be uh, reported more to police and that uh, thus may ex uh, the experts believe that the true magnitude of the problem is hard to estimate because most of the time people don't report uh, these issues of gender-based violence. Do they report the issues of gender-based violence? I don't think they, they don't, people generally don't report these issues. So causes of gender-based violence. So these uh, causes of gender-based violence uh, have been drawn from the Moono and Raphael 2018. So first is the psychological. The psychological theories focus on the personality traits and mental characteristics of the offender. Those are just personality traits and mental characteristics. Maybe some people are just violent by personality or mental traits where, where we are talking about mental illnesses, right? Most of the times in, in, in settings, generally people, particularly black people, don't, um, they don't seek help for mental health issues. And personal traits, including sudden bursts of anger, poor impulse control, and poor self-esteem. This is a very common factor. Generally, the psychological perspective of men who uh, engage in gender-based violence is the element of uh, poor self-esteem. So why, why do you think it's, it's the element of poor self-esteem? Why do you think men... Uh, men who engage in gender-based violence, they, are, they are, have been highlighted by psychologists to have poor self-esteem. Okay, I'm going to go to the See, George? I'm going to go So, psychologists have denoted that generally it depicts a man who has poor self-esteem. So why do you think that's like that? Out of frustration. So sometimes it can be in the Magdalene Shido around their friends, they don't have power, right? So they want to take it out on a person that is around them. So that this is how it denotes the poor self-esteem. And the second is jealousy. So many cases of domestic violence against women occur due to jealousy when the spouse is, is, is either suspected of being unfaithful or is planning to leave the relationship. This is very common when you're looking at uh, the causes of gender-based violence, where right? it's coming from something like this. So technically, when you're looking at this gender-based violence, it's either or, right? A woman can also do something like this if a man says, Woody, I'm going to leave you and so on. You never know. So the social, and also the social stress. You said, Woody, a man can be frustrated, right? Many of the times, uh, gender-based violence occurs because um, of stress in various settings. So couples in poverty may be more likely to experience domestic violence. Um, and also power and control. So the abuser is in order, the abusers abuse in order to establish and maintain control over a partner. So, so generally, that it's, it's more of a um, in that setting where you're just trying to maintain that, I mean, authority over you, right? And or even my what I was and bam, so we am the other body, what I was in the head because you know, goody and my abu and the bamboo, wait, it's a very difficult situation. So, abusers abuse in order to establish or and maintain control over the partner. The abuser's efforts to dominate have been attributed to low self-esteem or feelings of inadequacy, unresolved childhood conflicts, the stress of poverty, hostility and resentment towards the woman, which is called misogyny. So the resentment, have you heard of this resentment towards women? Have you heard of such an example before? Okay, so this is common amongst people who um, okay, so they generally because they're not how they are on it. So generally, as a child, you you might not understand the causes of why someone can leave. This is even common 
uh, girls who were not raised by their fathers, right? So they might have a, a negative attitude towards men because of what happened to their dad. And the same way, men, some men have got a negative attitude towards women because of what happened with their mom, right? So um, this is the resentment towards women as a, an example. So the kinds of violence against women include that have been um, culturally, culturally driven, include the honor killing. So in some Nigerian communities, rape victims, uh, women suspected of engaging in premarital sex, and women accused of adultery have been murdered by their relatives because of the violation of a woman's chastity is viewed as an upfront uh, to the family's owner. And the second is early marriages. So the practice of early marriages is pre prevalent through the world, especially in Africa and Southern Asia. So these practices, uh, or this practice jeopardizes women's health rights, uh, raises their risk to exposure to HIV and AIDS, and limits their chances of attending schools, and trafficking of girls. So the trafficking of girls involves the recruitment and transportation using deception, cohesion, and threats in order to place and keep them in a situation of slavery, forced labor, forced labor or servitude. And the, uh, we have the wife battery, which uh, is, occurs in form of uh, uh, violence uh, through the husband. Uh, that sometimes can lead to death. And the last is uh, violence um, and also rape, often afflicted by women, by perpetrators of sexual gratification. So these are the kind of violences that have been highlighted by many international organs um, that are being experienced by women across uh, various um, areas in the world. So it is just not um, developing countries, but also developed countries experience these uh, very same issues. So to summarize, uh, this unit was able to look at uh, the meaning of gender-based violence and what factors can lead to violence against women in the society. So the gender-based violence is a serious crime against humanity, especially with regards to women and girls. So gender differentiation often leads to women being uh, evasaged as weak and thereby <coughs> perceived as an easy victim to pain <coughs> and harm. And gender-based violence as an important factor is that it limits, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a woman's ability to attain their potential in society and this human right abuse against women should be adequately addressed in development initiative for the well-being of women. Any questions? <clears throat> I think we have highlighted um, the human rights approach which tries to address how we specify the initiatives that can be made in society in regards to the human rights that have not been fulfilled. We have also looked at the cultural patterns that maintain the negative impact, uh, impact on uh, gender inequalities that I experienced. And we've also highlighted uh, the gender-based violence by looking at the causes of gender-based violence and some forms of gender-based violence that have been um, identified <coughs> in the the various countries across the world okay so in our next lesson we'll be looking at you can write that down cultural impact of gender the cultural impact on <clears throat> gender that's where we are going to start in the previous in the next lesson So the cultural impact of gender, to introduce it, this, this is where we're going to start from, is trying to understand um, how gender has been um, <clears throat> structured because of culture, right? Uh, the cultural perspectives of uh, different genders across the world and also the biological differences that have been highlighted um, in different cultures and also in related to gender. So a very good example that you can look at is um, <clears throat> the Amazons. You've heard of this? The American Amazons. You can just look that up. Okay? You can look that up in reference to what we are going to discuss in the impact of gender.
yeah, the American Amazons, which are the women, <clears throat> the women warriors, eh? Yeah, so you can just look it up as uh, an example to our, um, our next lesson. Okay. <clears throat> you can just sign that. Oh, wait, do you have a pen? Yeah. So day is 12, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 